Welcome, welcome, welcome to a winning edition of the Miami Heat Beat Post Game Show. I'm your host, John Carlo Navas, and with me today, we got Kenny working overtime, wearing the hangover time shirt. What's up, my man? Man, this <laughs> we can get into this game. I'm obviously, if, if anybody knows me, I feel great right now. We can just go ahead and get into it. I am so happy because really, <laughs> Kenny. The, let, let's. I, I want to get into the biggest story of the night, and there were so many mm -hmm. things that happened tonight that I think we got to talk about. Jimmy and Bam looking really good together. You know, obviously mm -hmm. the contributions up and down the court. The Pepas, the premature <laughs> Pepas. What was there like five minutes left in the game? You know what? They've been doing that this season for whatever reason. <laughs> um, in the games they've won, they've always they've done it kind of prematurely now, which I respect. Two oh four, Kenny, Kenny, a whole two oh four. That's like before they start reviewing shit. Yeah. Okay. And so this DJ's legacy was on the line after they played Pepas. The Clippers got two threes, and the Heat had a turnover on an inbound. I was scared. DJ but you M. Know Dot what? apparently is the man's name. <laughs> DJ M. Dot, that final one minute and 16 seconds, Kenny, that was legacy defining. But you know what, though? Um, it's kind of like Steph Curry turning around on his threes. Um, you just, when you feel it, you feel it. Um, like I said, he's been doing that kind of all season when the Heat win. Um, but I don't think they've lost when he's done it. So. No, you know what, DJ M. Dot? Yeah. Hey. Thank you. Shout out to DJ M. Dot. So, Kenny, okay. For real talk, though. Uh, biggest story, I think, is Jimmy and Bam kind of looking good together. I think when Bam had mm -hmm. the really dominant scoring run when Jimmy was out, Jimmy came <laughs> back in the lineup. Some of it looked a little bit awkward, and everyone's like, here we go again. You know, all the tanking mm -hmm. conversations happen, blah, blah, blah. And tonight's a night that Bam looked dominant, aggressive. I thought Jimmy set the tone early. Mm -hmm. Jimmy decided, I'm going to get mine. I'm going to set the physicality early. I'm going to get to the basket. I'm going to put my head down. We are not going to get outscored in the paint again. That shit's not happening. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I thought that set the tone for both of them. And they were both fantastic with each other today and even playing off each other. Yeah. And you know what it is? Um, because you mentioned Jimmy's aggression. I think what it is, they can they can fit a lot better than they do if they really get into what they can do. And what I mean by that is, Jimmy is aggressive as he looked. He took twelve shots tonight. He got to the line, sure, but he was ten for twelve tonight, I believe. Um, Come on, been, bro, that's fucking crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like he he only took twelve field goals. Man, twenty six. Yeah, yeah, and, but you know what also helps is. With Bam individually and with Jimmy, what I've noticed is I think Bam's mid-range jumper, that 10 to 15 footer, that might be on a scouting report now because teams guard him a lot closer. And so the paint does get clogged at times, but it's not nearly as much. And so they are – obviously, Bam gets his opportunities to get to the basket and be aggressive and all that stuff. But it also opens stuff up a little more for Jimmy. And so I think now with them kind of settling into that and Jimmy not – feeling like he has to come in and score just for them to have a shot. I think that's starting to smooth itself out a little. I want to say, I want to highlight a play that happened early in the game. It was like, it was like midway in the first quarter. Bam gets the ball kind of the mid block on the left side. Kind of, you mm -hmm. know, you know how it works. The double, the, the, the double kind of jumps and the guy kind of goes out to make sure that he's guarding his man at the dunker spot. Mm -hmm. That guy is Jimmy, right? And yeah. Bam looks at the basket, makes a move, gets to the rim. Jimmy's right there. His his man kind of comes over to help. Bam has to panic pass to to Hero, mm -hmm. who's not like super open. Hero gets like a decent shot off. They miss. Clippers go in transition. And I thought, uh oh, uh oh, mm -hmm. that's that's like the bad shit that you're just like, oh, if that's that's a problem, right? And it was like really jarring mm -hmm. to me. And then I want to credit Jimmy for recognizing that moment. And and he was not in Bam's way again. 
<laughs> and I, I, I mean, maybe a couple of times kind of in the flow of offense, you kind of moving your use of stuff. But I thought there was a conscious effort by Jimmy to move smartly, to cut when needed, not take up mm-hmm. bam space. Siobhan talks a lot about kind of guys existing in the same spots. And I thought Jimmy recognized that. And he let Bam have the space. And that's why after that, because, you know, Bam didn't really, Bam with what he had, he, he was like two for eight in, in the first quarter or midway through the second. Mm-hmm. When Bam came back in the game, Jimmy recognized that, gave man the space, and it was all without a point guard, right? Without a guy like Kyle mm-hmm. to organize the offense or Gabe or anything. They did that, you know, that I, I credit Jimmy a lot for that, man. Yeah, you know, it's, this all comes back to Bam's, I don't want to call it aggression because that's an oversimplification. Um, he brought some new weapons to um I think to his not offense. aggression, Kenny, I don't, not to cut you off, yeah. a willingness to score. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It's a willingness to score, and but what I'm saying is he came back with a skill set to score in multiple ways. And so now he's not losing the confidence if they drop. Um, he had the bad game against, I think it was Memphis or whoever it was, but... Nah, it, it that happens way less often than not. I think now he's more confident to score because he's confident in multiple ways of scoring rather than just a roll or just a drive to the basket. And with and I think the team recognizes that they're empowering him. It seems like every time Tyler gets the ball, he's passing it to Bam at times. <laughs> and that's, and that's it's, it's opening a lot of stuff up because now you have to worry about Bam. Um, I tweeted this out right before we started. This was Bam's fourth 30-point game of this season. And prior to this, in his career, he had seven. So it, it's a different BAM this year. And that's helping a team out in the way people have always kind of seen it could. He just, his skill set just had to catch up to the opportunities he was getting. Not just a different BAM, but, uh, you know, even tonight, I thought the four assists were their good assists. He's getting them in the mm-hmm. flow of the offense. It's not like before where he was kind of out by the elbow. I thought tonight he got a lot of those. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about Caleb Barton tonight, who mm-hmm. really in that second quarter, you know, they, you know, Spo went to a jimmy and bam lineup in the third quarter. It was like Hero and Deadman and Max and a bunch of their, their kind of, you know, role guys who haven't really played well. It's like, okay, Tyler, you go do stuff with these guys. And I don't think those lineups have worked. And I think it's a little, you know, and I, and Kenny, you know, I know that you're a big Tyler guy. You know, I said on the podcast mm-hmm. yesterday, I go, I think that they should probably you know, ex- explore moving him to the bench. Just not not because it's a demotion, but just because like their mm-hmm. bench needs something, and it's not fair yeah. to just stick him in there like with all the reserves without any like of starters playing minutes with him or whatever. Um, and I thought, I-, I thought after that, that didn't happen again. Um, you know, they kind of got a little more control of the rotations, especially on a night without Kyle. It's it's tough, and mm-hmm. you know they went down eight, I believe, um, in those lineups. Caleb kind of comes in the game again and and he has what a personal like 80 run or a 60 run or something. Mm-hmm. He just absolutely gets from down the, down the downhill from 3 everything. He was huge tonight. Yeah, and I feel like Caleb now, I don't know if it's necessarily empowerment, but he seems to be taking a lot more threes in these past couple of weeks. I, I, I will call it an empowerment because that just wasn't his job last year. And their movement, now, Kenny, do you remember the one? Yeah. I mean, he missed it, but, like, there was one in the corner mm-hmm. where he, like, relocated to the corner to shoot a three. I was like, yo, yeah. that's like Duncan <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, like, he's um he's obviously worked on that in the offseason, and so now that's also opening things up for them, especially with the size disadvantage. You don't really want him just barreling into the basket, all in, into paint all the time. So now he has that jumper. He's empowered to take it, and now teams are going to have to respect it because he hit how many tonight, five or six? Yeah, he hit, a, I think it was, yeah, four. Let me check. Uh, he hit four of eight from three. Yeah, and that's enough for teams to have to respect it, and that's going to open up a lot more things. But just hats off to him just coming back this season with that jumper because that was – he shot 41% last season, I believe, but it was on low volume. So now for him to kind of kick up the volume recently and still be able to knock him down on a decent clip, that's put the that's ball on the floor because I think, like, yeah. that has – has kind of helped his downhill game a ton because now they're closing out for real. Uh, he shooters mm-hmm. tonight, you know, they shot thirty-seven and a half percent from three, which is which is good, not great, right? It, it's good, and, and you'll win games by doing that. Uh, but really, it was it was kind of the starters that did it. You know, Hero uh, hit a bunch; he was fifty percent. You know, Caleb, we just talked about. Uh, Jimmy was two for two. Funny enough, you know, I know Max was two for seven, so a bit of a struggle for him. So. I think the story of the season has kind of been the same. It's like their role guys have struggled. These guys can't hit mm-hmm. shots. Even Max is, is kind of hot and cold, all that stuff. 
Um, and and tonight didn't make me feel any different about that. But what it made me feel good about was Jimmy and Bam playing well together. Caleb kind of mm-hmm. fitting in that mix. Hero finding his spots to kind of take over and do his 19, nine rebounds. I know you love the rebounding. I'll give you a little bit of yeah. time to talk about your guy in a second. But I think that's a major takeaway is kind of what we just talked about at the top. A couple people in chat. Craig Dillinger says, 4-0 and Bam scores 30 plus. That makes sense. Um, Kyle asked, um, you know, is this the new, no- is, uh, is this another hot stretch or is this the new norm for Bam? I think, Kenny, we got to wait and see, right? I, I think we hope it's a new norm. I think we're talking mm-hmm. about what's trending right for them, but, mm-hmm. you know, that's something that I think we got to see going forward. Yeah, I definitely think um, – I'm not going to say he's going to come out and average 30 a game. <laughs> but like we mentioned, he is – he's come back this season with a lot more different ways to score. He's a threat from more areas, and the team is empowering him to do so. It's not like last year we just kind of – in previous years, we just kind of stuck – setting other guys up with DHOs and all this stuff like that. He, it seems like at times Spo is saying, hey, no, go to BAM. Yeah, BAM is going to do it for us. And so I wouldn't necessarily call this the new norm because 30 points is <laughs> a huge jump. But him being a threat to do so, I think, is a new norm. I agree. And that's – to me, Kenny, that's their biggest kind of ceiling raiser in the season. You know, they get a win against a team, by the way. Clippers do not have a very good offense. So I was mm-hmm. a little worried in the first quarter when the Clippers were hitting a bunch of threes and they look really good. Paul George is going to Paul George. Had an amazing game. Uh, but without mm-hmm. Kawhi, you know, they are a little short on firepower. Um, they, they, they're kind of a team that for sure needs to be whole. So, you know, they're on the second night of a back-to-back. So I don't want to mm-hmm. take too much from a win that had kind of those caveats. But PG played great. You know, they didn't get they got a lot of production out of Reggie Jackson. And really outside of that, that was kind of it for them. You know, Batum had, mm-hmm. you know, Batum had a couple nice, you know, obviously a good shooter. God, I wish we had Batum. <laughs> that would be <laughs> something else. Canard made a couple <laughs> plays, but really it, it was kind of those guys. So don't know what to take. Their offense is you know their offense is like the second worst in the league or something. Yeah. But a lot of that is just I don't I'm not and I'm not gonna stick on this stay on this too long, but I'm just not sure what they're looking to accomplish with the Clippers resting guys and bringing them back. Yeah, I'm just not sure they're never gonna get any continuity, so I'm just not sure what their end goal is. You know, Kenny, that kinda reminds me of the Dwayne Wade when that, that year, the twenty fourteen year where they had the, yeah. the D Wade maintenance plan, and they just look like shit all year. And they look like mm-hmm. shit in the playoffs. I mean they they absolutely defecated all over the Pacers. At that point the Heat were the Pacers daddies. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Nobody thought they were losing that series. Didn't that series go seven? <laughs> I, I or don't went six remember, or seven. Man. I don't know. But it was like it was one of those longer series that nobody thought Indiana was going to win. <laughs> uh, but you know, really in the finals, you kind of saw like them fall apart. And I, I, I kind of worry the Clippers in that sense as well. You know, they're. I think you can see where they struggle. Right, they don't have a ton of playmaking, and I think the, the the kind of story for them is kind of their guard play, and they just don't have enough at the point guard spot. They, they're trying John mm-hmm. Wall. Um, who looked, I don't know, didn't really make an impact for me. You know, Reggie's not doing this every night. You know, you get Luke Kennard, who kind of pops off sometimes, but other times it's just Luke Kennard. So, you know, honestly, a pretty good team for Miami to, they're a good team, uh, you yeah. know, but not, you know, again, all those caveats, I want to give context to um, to that. Skinny Biggie says, did go seven, but the blowout in game seven. I, I remember watching the, the last game, the closeout game, uh, slim and I remember that they just demolished Indiana and I, I just remember that that game, that was just never uh, in doubt shout out to Brando 904 with the tier one sub send you the drip drop emojis or oh, the fuck them numbers emojis excuse me that's small <laughs> twitch chat small uh they said that the Pacers were favored in, in 14 I don't know man I don't remember that I mean, maybe maybe white America favored them not me <laughs> not me those Pacers teams did scare me though. I'm not even gonna pretend they didn't. <laughs> they used to scare me. Yo, shout out to Ryan Prevero for the Prime sub. If you uh, if you don't know, and if you're not sub, you know Amazon. Listen, Jeff Bezos gives you a free subscription, right? So if you you know exclamation point Prime in the chat, it, it sends you to the page, and uh, and you get a free sub. So you know support us, support yourself, get access to emotes, no commercials, all that good stuff. Um, and 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 we'll see. Kenny, let's talk about your boy as we kind of round out the show. Your man had 19-9, and nine, still making mm-hmm. strides as a playmaker, 
active in rebounding where it's been just a week, not, maybe not a weakness, but a concern for mm-hmm. them all year. Heat, again, second game in a row, deadlocked in rebounds with their opponent. Um, <laughs> but that's good enough to win games. So let's talk about your boy Hero. How would you feel about him? What I want to say about him, just and I want to give him credit for, is every time there is an issue with his game, or even the perceived issue, I, I thought it was a real issue, he addresses it very quickly. Um, I'm not sure how many assists he had, but he had four. I don't measure playmaking by that. Yeah, but I don't measure playmaking by that. Anyway, he up, up until they really needed him to score, he wasn't really looking for his own shot or to try to force anything. So he's gotten so quickly so much better at picking his times to score and not trying to force it and not trying to do everything on his own. Um, really, as soon as he came back from the injury, he was feeding Bam. He was feeding Jimmy. He... Even though Max was struggling, he tried to get Max involved. So that's what I'm happy about. The rebounding has always sort of been there. He's taken it to a different level this year, obviously. But he's doing a lot of different things aside from what we expect from him. Um, when Even when, this, like I said, he wasn't looking to score in the first half for the most part. But he's doing so many other things. I just can't help but just give him credit for that because he gets looked at as a score and quote-unquote suffer sometimes. But he's just been doing what it takes to win lately. And hopefully the results starts to show. I thought tonight he played within the flow of the team. I thought, other mm-hmm. than the the moments where he was just with a bunch of non-ball handlers, I thought mm-hmm. he really kind of fit within the flow. And, and something I talked about uh, yesterday on the pod where his catch-and-shoot numbers this year, are, he's at 24% as a catch-and-shoot three-point shooter this year. But he's a 42% pull-up shooter. And that tells me mm-hmm. a couple things. He's, I mean, we know he's a good catch and shoot guy because he's been his whole career so i'm not worried Mm -hmm. about like he just suddenly can't do that anymore but i do think he's out of rhythm when he does get his catch and shoot opportunities and i Mm -hmm. do think that when he's on the ball and handling it's when he's at his most comfortable right because he can leverage the dribble you know he can kind of get into his three if they kind of play off of him and stuff like that so tonight i thought was a good mix of the two and i think that's a healthy balance i mean he listen he can get if that guy wanted to like shoot a bunch he could score 25 pretty often i think we know that the scoring talent's Mm -hmm. there uh, but, you know, kind of fitting within what the team needed tonight. Bam had it going. Jimmy had it going and kind of found his his little grooves to score. I thought was huge, especially in especially in the second half, really. Yeah. Yeah. That's when he kind of started to really take more shots. And that's a big reason why I was never really too worried about him finding that balance, because one, he said in the interview that he was looking to and everything he said he was working on, he really was. But also he's always a he's also a really talented off ball player. And so I understand the catch and shoot numbers look bad, but like you said, he's just not in rhythm sometimes. But that adjustment, it's a little tough to make, but it's not impossible to make. And I think he's made it pretty quickly for the most part. So I thought tonight, you know, the Clippers, you know, the Clippers try to feed defenses on Jimmy, right? One of them mm-hmm. was was the trapping, and and Jimmy I thought did a good job of kind of flipping the ball around. Tyler got got you know got to attack a couple a couple of switches. One of the instances where I thought that didn't look great was when he got. Uh, Zubak on a switch in the in the right corner. If you know the play I'm mm-hmm. talking about, late shot clock, yeah. you know, had to kind of make a move. Zubac played him well, had to take a desperation corner three. Those are not the kind of plays that you want from him, right? Mm-hmm. And and again, that was kind of a circumstance of the offense. You know, you know, you you, you kind of I think those are kind of areas where you look at, you know, I, I, where okay, maybe they can improve. You know, that that was kind of a you know ultimately didn't matter, but you know that was a big possession for them. So. Kind of looking for kind of those kinds of things, but he he was fantastic tonight. Clippers switched a ton uh, against mm-hmm. Jimmy late. Uh, kind of circling back to that, you know, kind of schematically before we get into Oladipo to close out the show. Um, I thought that was just it was good to see Jimmy get small dudes in the paint and bully them mm-hmm. because his post up numbers have not been good this year. And I think in reality they haven't looked for it as much as I would have liked. I liked Tyler yeah. active. In doing that, Tyler being an active screener, recognizing, okay, small guy's on me, let let my man cook, come screen, get the mm-hmm. switch. He and Max, I think, are very like aware of that, and they kind of go mm-hmm. and do it. And I and I thought Bam kind of screening for them to go screen for them because the Clippers weren't mm-hmm. switching off ball stuff. So already that guy's coming in late, and I, I thought it yielded a ton of good stuff. So really good awareness from Tyler mm-hmm. and Jimmy and, and really the whole team on that one. Yeah, and I do want to speak about um the Zubas play. Um, and this kind of goes to because I'm I've been higher on this team than most have, and understandably people have been low, but this they showed tonight what I think they can do. They have a ton of weapons, and so if you like, because the move at one point was 
put a big on Jimmy, drop him a little. But now you can't really do that because now Bam is going to take advantage of whatever mismatch he has. And so the, he did a great job tonight of whatever defense the Clippers threw at him. And Ty Lue is a great coach. He makes great adjustments. Absolutely. He were able to find counters to it very quickly. And the Clippers were just never able to really catch up to it and figure it out. And so I've, that's why I've been so high on this team. And again, hopefully the results start to yield. But it's I'm starting to really see what it is that they can do. Yeah, core culture is talking. Uh, core corner is talking about Bam called for Struce to screen for Jimmy on the play, resulting in the in the Struce corner three in in the fourth. They are aware, mm -hmm. and I and I like that because Kenny. I think a lot of times teams try to be stuff that they're not, right? And I think mm -hmm. Miami's not at least this season. They haven't been good at a lot of stuff, but one mm -hmm. thing they are historically good at is fucking hunting people. They're just good yeah. at it. Jimmy is fucking good at it, and they're smart players. And they know what to do. So shout outs to them. Uh, you know, somebody in chat goes, I still love this team. I just need our bench to find form. Absolutely. Tonight's a great kind mm -hmm. of building block win after just really two horrible losses. Where, by the way, mm -hmm. they looked dead in the water in those games. They looked absolutely dead in mm -hmm. the in, in the in the game against Detroit and in the game against uh Memphis. And tonight they had an urgency. They forced a ton of turnovers. They were playing the passing lanes the way that you know that they can. Jimmy is sharking. Uh, you know, Kale says Jimmy's a predator out there hunting smaller. Jimmy is a predator mm -hmm. on ball, off that. So just felt good to kind of see that going. Uh, Kenny McGee says shout out to the Miami Heat. Kenny, Oladipo, second game. Mm -hmm. How are we feeling about Depot? Um, I know a lot of fans are expecting stuff out of him. I know the organization is hoping for stuff out of him. What did what did Kenny see from Depot tonight? I liked, and I'm I, I don't even I haven't looked at his numbers. I don't know what he was like from the field, but I, I these two games I've pretty much liked everything I've seen from Oladipo. Um, and here's the difference: when he first came to the Heat, and when he came back from the injury, he looked hesitant. He looked like he was kind of trying to find his way. He didn't really know where he fit. He was just trying to figure it out. These two games he's been back, he's been very intentional. I know the first game he wasn't passing a bunch. He was just kind of shooting and finding his own shot. But I do like that because, one, the Heat need scoring, especially off the bench. And, two, there's no hesitation from him. He, he doesn't look like his confidence is affected by anything at all. He looks like he feels like he's Victor Oladipo again. And so whether the shots are going in or not, like I can sit there and harp on his finishing. I, I don't care about that right now. I'm really liking the mentality from him and the attack from him. And so once I feel like the shots are going to start falling because his confidence looks like it is there. And so I, I have nothing bad to say about all Debo. I'm just looking forward to really seeing him progress throughout the season. I liked his paint touches tonight, and uh, Corey Corner said the same thing. You know, he he still has that explosiveness. He, he kind of mm -hmm. glides, and he goes fast. And <laughs> they don't have a lot of that. Because, like, Gabe yeah. is not zippy. Kyle, mm -hmm. not zippy. Jimmy, not zippy. They don't just have they don't have zip, right? Mm -hmm. And Depot gives them that little ump, right? And I think it's kind of noticeable. Uh his stats tonight, as you asked, were uh six points, two rebounds, two assists, plus five. Mm -hmm. Uh we love that. No turnovers. So, you know, that's that's uh that's good stuff there. Um Yeah, I mean, just a good win for them. The defense you know, less of the zone, more of the man, you know, more switching, more playing the passing lane, more being aggressive, kind of more of what they're used to, right? I think they're I think we're kind of getting back into normalcy a little bit, which you like to see. So mm -hmm. I'm happy with today. I'm I'm not going to be foolish enough to overreact to a win again. Uh, I did that with the Phoenix game and I did it again with the Boston game. And, you know, they're just not they have to earn at least my trust a little more than just that. So hopefully, you know, when we talk to you guys next, you know, uh, I think they played the Spurs on Saturday, correct? Um, and then, uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh, they, so hopefully next time we talk uh, on a heat beat platform, you know, they, they, they've stacked up another win. They got to get above 500. I don't think they've been above. They've gone to 500. I don't think they've been above 500. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Yeah, they play Saturday at 4, which is right after the World Cup match. So that's good. Uh, thank you, Adam Silver. Um, <laughs> these U.S. Men's National Team players have to get the fuck out of my arena, bro. I'm just sick of them. 
Weston McKinney, Damn. now Pulisic. Now, f- fuck out of here, bro. Because I, I, I I've never watched soccer in my life. They never eliminate. watched they soccer? Eliminate, Kenny, right? you've never watched soccer in, in your life? I'm not from that part of Miami <laughs> where, like, Kenny, people, like, you watching just, soccer. Come on, it's just it's the biggest I, fucking sport in the I, world. I, I lived a very, like... I was between 56th Street and 7th Avenue and 62nd Street and 7th Avenue. We I, it wasn't a lot of soccer; it was football and some basketball. Chat saying that you're not uh, Outback Teresa says you're not missing out, Kenny. <laughs> um, crazy man! I can't believe it. we got to get you to watch soccer. We'll change that. You're in Texas now. Yeah, maybe that's a soccer yeah. hotbed. Yeah, maybe F- football hotbed. <laughs> um, Kenny, when the U.S. men loses to Trinidad, I'm not overreacting. <laughs> That's a, that is a deep cut of U.S. soccer. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today on the Heat Beat Post Game Show. Uh, I'll see you, I believe, on Monday they play again. I think uh, they play Saturday against the Spurs. I should know the schedule. I don't. I have a calendar now. You know, I've discovered Google calendars. Yeah, they play Indiana <laughs> next Monday. Uh, and then Hangover Time is uh, on Wednesday against Oklahoma City. So that'll be a kind of fun day. So... Uh, the fourteenth, uh, that'll be hot, and uh, we have we have a post game show and a pre game show on Monday uh, for Indiana. Uh, we have Christian's wedding. Christian Hernandez, statistician and professional Photoshopper. So Brass Alf Brian, uh, Five Reasons own Miami Heat beat alumni Troppy Baby Alex Toledo. We will all be in attendance. We will take pictures and have a great old drunk time. Uh, we'll we'll come back to tell the stories on hot. Maybe we'll have some videos to put. Who knows? Who knows what's to come? Um, so shout out to Christian, and uh, I'll see you guys. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Have a great weekend. I love you guys. Take care, and uh, you know, go Heat. <laughs>